this is uh, actually our offices up here, um, little small areas of study as well as uh, places where we can receive uh, some of our guests. Uh, it's located in what we call the Champagne Cellars, the, uh, the building where the very first sparkling wines were made in California. It's really a cool space because you walk in here and you just have this feeling like there's going to be a ghost popping out of the wall any moment now. There are some stories of a few ghosts, especially in the, uh, the original caves. Um, one or two people have been uh, kind of spooked by some of the uh, activities that late at night especially they've, they've been subject to. John Charles Boisset, the, uh, the owner of Buena Vista, when he uh, bought this, uh, this building, um, it was in pretty bad disrepair. And uh, if there's one thing John Charles likes to do is make sure that uh, things are, are kept up nicely and refurbished where needed. And he has taken what was a disrepaired old stone building and made it pretty luxurious. It's, it really is. I, you know, it's, the impact people feel, and I, I say feel because there is an emotional response. I think anytime you walk down the little wooded path and you see these stone buildings, and then especially when you when you see the doors open to the champagne cellar and look back, uh, just magnificent magnificent caves, and just uh, it it really I think just soaks into everyone who comes and visits. The, the response we see, we do uh, dinners in the caves, and the response we see from folks when they come in and see the candles lit and everything just perfectly set is, it's phenomenal, and uh, there's no other place like it. Um, it's, it's a very special location. Even if you're kind of just, you know, not so much about wine, but about history, um, you feel it on this site. And uh, it's, it's a very important part of California history, and just a, it's a magical place to visit. We've had tremendous response. When we uh, purchased the winery in 2011, um, it had kind of been traded back and forth, uh, forth between some, some larger companies, and uh, at that point wasn't really being taken care of. It was uh, a lot of asphalt and chain link fences and buildings that were literally condemned. Um, and so uh, he came in and had the vision um, you know, somewhat foolish a lot of people thought of really refurbishing and reopening these sites, um, bringing it back so people could come and visit uh, these historic cellars. And so after a, a very lengthy renovation process where we seismically retrofitted the caves as well as the stone buildings, um, we were lucky enough to honor the Count's 200th birthday with a, a grand reopening. Um, we brought winemaking back to the cellars here and visitors back to all levels of the winery. And it's uh, we've had a great response uh, from the local community, um, the amount of support we've gotten. Uh, you don't always see that in wine country. A lot of people are, are nervous about um, things changing, but people wanted to see Buena Vista come back to life. And we were blessed to be able to do that. Well, uh, Count Augustin Horasti um, was a, a European, a Hungarian nobleman. Um, he, uh, in many ways, was uh, a bit of Calif one of California's folk heroes. Uh, he emigrated from Hungary when he was a young man and uh, essentially uh, started off in Wisconsin trying to set up his kind of picturesque, perfect European-style village on the Wisconsin River. Um, planted grapes, planted hops, uh, built essentially what became the city of Sauk City. Uh, and. Uh, was somewhat successful, but hadn't quite reached the level that he thought um, a man of his energy would reach. And so after several years hearing of uh, the developments of California and the gold rush, he decided to go west. Uh, he picked up his entire family for the second time. First, he moved them from Hungary to Wisconsin, and now he moved them from Wisconsin to, to San Diego. What year was that? This would have been 18, late 1848, early 1849. Not an easy time to move people. You were, he was doing it by wagon train. Yeah, so um, he led this wagon train across the West, settled in San Diego, um, became the first sheriff of San Diego County, <laughs> um, was elected to the California State Legislature, and uh, ended up moving north, became the chief assayer of the San Francisco Mint, um, became friends with very important people, such as Mario, General Mariano Vallejo, um, who was uh, a former governor general of California when it was part of Mexico. And uh, talking with Vallejo, ended up purchasing this property that uh, is Buena Vista. Um, dug the first caves made for winemaking in California, made the first sparkling wine in California, built the first stone winery building, um, built the first gravity-fed winery um, in California, and then while all this is going on, he goes, gets uh, appointed by the state legislature of California to go back to Europe and uh, bring back cuttings of all the grape 
varieties, all the great grape varieties of France, of Italy, Germany, Spain, um, goes and collects hundreds of thousands of cuttings of really the foundation stock of California viticulture. Um, brings them back. This is all during the Civil War, so a, a very tortuous path, path to come back with all those cuttings and have them still be intact. Um, and, you know, starts a nursery and distributes these cuttings so that the foundation stock of California really comes through him. Um, so an incredibly important person when it comes to, to California winemaking history. So I've been with Buena Vista since John Charles and the Boisse family purchased it in 2011. Um, I'm a born and raised uh, Sonoma County native. Uh, my family actually emigrated to Sonoma County right around the same time as the Count. Uh, oh. uh, just uh, one creek over, so to speak, uh, where Garricky Road is, is where my, my ancestor, Adolf Garricky, first settled. Um, but he was in cattle ranching and not in uh, grape growing. And so who knows if they ever ran into each other at that point in time. Um, but I grew up uh, in, on my, uh, my parents' property out west of Petaluma now and uh, was, have been involved in agriculture my whole life. And uh, following uh, uh, some connections from my mother's side of the family in the Napa Valley, decided to follow a pursuit in winemaking, went to UC Davis, and uh, started working with John Charles after he purchased the Deloche Vineyard up in uh, Santa Rosa in the Russian River Valley, and uh, been winemaker up there since 2008. And then with the Buena Vista purchase, uh, I jumped at the opportunity of being able to lead the uh, the rebirth um, in terms of the winemaking and the, the wine styles here, and uh, have been very lucky and fortunate to work with David Ramey as our consultant winemaker in really reshaping and crafting these wines to what we feel are some of the best that Buena Vista has ever produced. He uh, has a kind of a foundational knowledge that it's, um, uh, when it comes to great Chardonnays, when it comes to Bordeaux varieties in particular, his uh, experience is, I think, unmatched really in California. Um, he provides a perspective that uh, I think it, it really in emphasizes some of the basic tenements to making fine wine. Um, and it's very easy to get distracted as a winemaker by new flashy things that other people are doing. And David is that person you can go back to and talk to and really reason out what what is wine at its base. And it, it's something that tastes delicious. And if you're not paying attention to that, then um, you've lost your way. It did, um, especially with John Charles's vision, which was to really take this winery, which, like I said, had been kind of lost in the in the wilderness and bring it back to, to being a, a focal point of uh, not just Sonoma County wine, but California wine. Um, and so it was reemphasizing the greatness of the terroirs that we have around us. And uh, one of the, the first things we did was look at what we were doing at Buena Vista for the last few years, had been doing at Buena Vista previous to the Boisés. Um, and it had emphasized a, a very small subregion, just the Carneros region, um, which makes some fantastic Pinot Noirs and Chardonnays. And uh, we didn't want to lose sight of that, but we also saw where the winery is located at the at the base of the of the Mayacamas, uh, essentially the Moon Mountain Appalachian starts behind us and goes to the north. And I mean, this is terrific Cabernet land. Um, and so bringing back great Cabernet um, to Buena Vista and really looking at these fantastic volcanic soils that we have here, we are essentially uh, built into a pile of compacted ash. I mean, it's kind of a really fun to walk around the hills behind us. Um, and the the aspect and the exposure you have, these are world-class wines. And to, to not be celebrating them um, seemed a tragedy. And for myself, who had many years of making Pinot Noir and Chardonnay at Deloche, the, the Carneros Pinot and Chardonnay thing was very comfortable. Yeah. Cabernet was a stretch, and that was where I was you know, very much uncertain. Um, but having the confidence of John Charles behind me and having the mentorship of David Ramey to work with, uh, we, we feel like we've made some fantastic wines. And uh, uh, there's some other people out there, of course, who, who think so as well. So we're always happy to hear that. Mm.